Welcome. ASA is proud to welcome Dr. William Height, Superintendent of the School District of Philadelphia, to have a conversation with us about college access and success, and in particular to share some insights from his experience in Prince George's County Public Schools. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. As a school district leader, how do you see your role in terms of managing a system that will support, guide, and manage all students to post-secondary success? The first thing that, as a school system superintendent, that I think about are those set of guiding beliefs about what do we believe for all of our young people. Then once we begin and answer that question, then we talk about so what structures are in place to provide all students with both access and opportunities to the course pathway that will get them there. And I must submit that this is not a process that can begin at uh, ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, certainly not 12th grade, but a process to begin anytime those young people enter our school system. So we have to be thinking about elementary school students, middle school students, and high school students. Can you talk a little bit about how post-secondary outcomes data can help inform K-12 leaders? I think that in order for us, both post-secondary and K-12, to, be, to really begin thinking about this process more comprehensively, we have to think about what are the knowledge and skill sets that all students need in order to be successful. And how, do we, and how we define success really becomes important. And I like to look at it against the work that Tony Wagner has done in the Global Achievement Gap when he identifies a set of criteria. And that criteria talks not just about content knowledge, but problem solving, critical thinking, collaboration, uh, dealing with diverse types of groups, communication, all of those things are equally important in educating the whole child. What kind of strategies are you seeing that are effective or what are the levers that you think are really important in terms of moving those first generation and low income students towards greater graduation rates and in turn post-secondary success? One thing that we know, it's been proven empirically, is that a, a predictor of college success is being exposed to college-like work uh, while students are in the K-12 environment. And unfortunately, in the K-12 environment, we actually create structures that provide those opportunities for some and eliminate those for others. And unfortunately, it typically falls along lines of income, uh, wealth, race, uh, whether or not a young person can speak English, and so all of those groups are then, uh, those groups are then not provided with the opportunities and access to that level of work. So the first thing that systems like ours can do is to remove some of the barriers that are in place for students to be exposed to this, um, this type of work while they're in K-12 systems. And those barriers are things like recommendation letters, or pre-assessments in order to show or demonstrate that you have the skill in order to do college level work. Why not expose all students to those opportunities so that um, all of those students will then have the access to that level of rigor and that level of expectation. One of the things that ASA's research has uncovered is that one of the factors in creating a college going culture is the idea of signaling. So that's the overt and covert signals of the school um, and how they communicate college success expectations to student body, families, and the community. We were fortunate enough to actually do an analysis about whether or not we had an environment that was promoting a college-going culture. And I want to use one brief example. We have every year a, a college fair for our Latino youth and their families and many individuals come to this college fair. This year we had about 1,500 individuals who attended. When we asked the question in Spanish, how many of you are interested, and these are not just high school students, these are elementary students and all of their families, family members are there. When we ask everyone in the audience, how many of you are interested in your child having an opportunity to go to college? almost every hand went up. Then when we followed that up with the question of how many of you know how to find information about applying for college, 
applying for financial aid or what I need to do in order to understand that process, about six hands went up. That indicated to us that we have to do a much better job of providing families with the information in a way that they can receive and understand. And we also have to do a much better job of helping them to help their young people just with some exposure. So we signal a lot about athletics and athletic outcomes. We have halls and walls filled with trophies. And that's a signal to individuals. And, but we don't have halls and walls filled with college information or names of colleges and just to get that out to students. And then finally, we don't talk about it from the perspective of a destination. We talk about graduation as a destination, not necessarily what students will do beyond that. So when we talk about exposing K-12 students to college level work and the kind of rigor that that expects, tell us a little bit about how Prince George's County has done that. So it is why we created the first middle college in the state of Maryland. It is on the campus of the Prince George's Community College and it is designed for young people to have a college level experience as they go through high school in Prince George's County. So essentially, we have a group of ninth graders that enters uh, this program. They have to do it by application. Those students enter the middle college and they begin their high school experience on the college campus. And in four years, they finish with a high school diploma and an associate's degree in health sciences. But the group that we wanted to really target this to were many of our students who are coming from circumstances of poverty. So the other requirement, uh, based on um, our desire to get those students into the program, is that 50% of those students must be from circumstances of poverty or first generation college students. And so those are the types of programs we're really putting in place to provide access to those students. We also have one more, and that is working with the engineering department at the University of Maryland, College Park. They now teach two engineering classes during the school day at Oxon Hill Middle School. And what that does is it exposes students in a different community than that of College Park to that level of work. And in both cases, what we found is although those expectations are much higher than what those students typically experience, most students rise to that level of expectations and have been very successful. You talked a bit about college knowledge in terms of first generation and low income families and how there might be a gap in terms of navigating the college application process and understanding what opportunities might be available for their children. We have to think more um, about our guidance counselors as really academic advisors uh, or college counselors or college recruitment specialists. And that means that their work is very different um, as it relates to the students in high schools. The other thing is actually making sure that all students have those opportunities. We were a district that was fortunate enough to be in a state that was awarded Race to the Top. And we're using a part of those Race to the Top funds to really enhance our college-going culture uh, environment. And it's a couple of things that's happening, but one thing in particular is exposing all students in high school to the SAT exam during the high school day. So we actually remove barriers for some families who cannot get students there on a Saturday to one of the testing sites or cannot afford it, but through like those, that funding mechanism, we will have the opportunity at least for a couple of years to expose all of our students who are juniors in high school to the SAT. So every student takes that um, exam. And so that's another example of some behaviors that I think could be associated with generating a college-going culture. Well, ASA really wants to thank Dr. William Height, Superintendent of the School District of Philadelphia, for some really great insights about college-going culture and increasing access and success for students. Thank you. It's been my pleasure.